Greetings, programs. This is Wretch, and welcome back to Vern the Shape of Fantasy. And in the last episode, guys, we got the truth that Jules Verne, the writer, is stuck in a world of his own creation, and he needs to find a way out, otherwise Phobos is basically going to turn his mind into a wasteland. So uh, we are here in the tunnels underneath the island. We learned a little bit about volcanoes here. And let's go ahead and travel to the left. I always like going to the left when we encounter a fork in the road. Man. E. Not ideal. Ooh, we got some writings. When I think of our forefathers, of all their deeds and miracles, how sad it is that such a noble lineage is ending like that of some wild animals. I pray to the primordials to have mercy on us. They are our only... It's the writer right there, I assume, with the caved-in skull. Okay. Well, that was literally a dead end. And figuratively. Let's see what's here on the right. Tunnel going down. Cracks in the flow. Can't change that. Path. Got some stalactites there. And then stalactites and stalagmites. Inside a dormant volcano in the middle of the ocean. Wonderful. He said with no sarcasm at all. The fact that he's talking gives me the impression that that is the path to the end. So let's see what's down here. Oh, never mind. I... <laughs> I was mistaken. Let's avoid the guards, if possible. I think I did miss an item over the course of our adventure. Which sucks, but... It is what it is. Oh, wait a minute. Aha! The war between the ancestors of the coast and the ancestors of the mountains that we have been suffering for two years came to an end yesterday. Admez and his mountain followers defeated Xander's men. There was a terrible slaughter, and Admez is now lord of the island. We fear for our lives. He's a violent and vengeful man. Their stupid wars have spoiled this year's harvest. I don't know what will happen. I fear for our future. Got some... Got some bad news for you there bad news for me, too, because now i got to head down to deal with those guards. At least avoid them. But it's not our first rodeo. I will head left first. Off you go. Oh, I'm going. Oh. Don't move back. Don't look back. Don't turn around. Thank you, friend. Oh, that was fast. That's not nice. That's not nice, game. <laughs> You're gonna turn around so fast and catch me. Should I have to follow him? See, he'll stay there for just a second. Close enough to touch the butt. You're gonna turn around and get me. Yep. Stop right there. <laughs> but now we know not to go that direction. There we are.
I mean, I gotta give him props. That was dirty, but in the best way. Just waste a minute of your time. More guards? Hmm. Strangely, no. Oh. We drop down. Hello there, Doc Trooper. But now I want to see if there's something over there. <laughs> I'm gonna get caught. I'm gonna get caught. Why would you put a box here? Unless there was something to grab. Thanks, game. I appreciate you. Actually, I'm okay with this. Because it got the shock trooper out of the way. Right there, you guys are gonna. The Bob. The bike. Very quickly. Awesome. Oh, that's not that good. Up. Whoa, that was fast. At least we're back here. This is the start point. You know, I probably should have went right there, shouldn't I have? <laughs> My mistake. Now they're kind of traveling opposite lanes. I don't think that'll be that big of a deal. Shock Trooper has a longer path to patrol. Doom, doom, doom. All right, let's look at your patrol, good sir. Wow, that's not nice. Stones fell violently from the highest part of the tunnel, warning the guards. What's that? Now I want to see. Nothing down there. Stop. Stop making it hard, Vern. Let's go. But no, I'm curious. Ah! No, he's just gonna stay there, isn't he? Yeah. We're pretty much stuck where we need to be. I can't drop down the ladder. Real quick. In terms of our items, man, we're missing three things from the crew. Uh, looks like I missed something over on the island. Eh, oh well. Such is life. I got you, filthy terrorist. Yeah, I didn't know if I could hide behind those rocks. I had to see. Go. Me? You stop right there. Ah. Oh. 
Okay, there we go. Now we're in time. Did you come after me, flamethrower? We got a little bit of a grace period. Oh crap, we may be here. Yeah, that's we're getting near where the raven was located. Cracks in the flow. Come on, buddy. Turn around. Quickly, quickly. And no cracks in the flow. Everything's over, damn raven. Van! Monsieur Van, at last. Brothers, lower your guns. If you are trying to look kind to me, I don't think it will work. I would never use flattery with you. It would be an insult to your wit. I want to share with you my vision of a better new world. <laughs> I'm not interested in your delusions of grandeur. You're blinded by the present, Van. Forget about now. Think about the future. You and I. We are special. Superior. United under the power of the artifact, we can rebuild the world. No more nation. No more empires. No more wars. It's the same you dream with, isn't it? I doubt that the world you dream of resembles mine. You are a monster. You disappoint me. With or without you, I will find a way to make the iMag work. We will have fun in the torture chamber. Take him! Promise. Oops. I got you, <laughs> filthy terrorist. <laughs> oh. Okay, one, once more with feeling. Where'd you teleport them? Oh god. Now the Nautilus is yours forever. Enjoy it. <laughs> you have defeated the Bloody Raven. Raised in a family associated with power since the times of the old Prussian kingdom, Hetzel learned early on to hate the hypocrisy in Commander Hetzel. I see that. Hold on. What was the name of the Pierre Jules Hetzel? It's like a personification of his anger right now at his editor. Hold on, we need to read that. Um, Hetzel learned early on to hate the hypocrisy and plots to define politics and day-to-day -day life in the elites of the city. Clean that decadent and unhealthy environment, he enlisted in the army at a very young age to fight on the front lines. Having fought in the Asian War of the 30s, he made rapid progress through his victories, his strategic talent, and the loyalty he earned from his men. He inaugurated his position as commander by founding the elite Echo Guard Corps, and in his desire to become the terror of his enemies, he had a suit of armor made for him that resembled a raven. From that moment on, he took the nickname Bloody Raven. When he was assigned to the campaign against the Golden Empire of Africa, he was appointed warden of the Terror Mine Prison, making it his base of operations and source of income. When Nemo's companions arrived laden with chains, the Raven rejoiced at having the honor of being in charge of torturing and breaking the very famous Captain Nemo. However, he underestimated the man and it cost him dearly. In one of his torture sessions, Nemo managed to cut his face with a piece of metal hidden in his sleeve, completely disfiguring him. He had a masked forge that, from that moment on, he would never take off in public. Before he could execute Nemo, he and his companions escaped, destroying the mine prison in the process. That became Bloody Raven's greatest and deepest shame. The captain became his obsession, driving him to the point of abandoning the African front with his Echo Guard in order to hunt him down. The chase halfway around the world gradually revealed to him the technological wonders hidden in the Nautilus and something that changed everything. The existence of the Flame of Hephaestus. Etzel realized that stopping the captain would not only open the door to all inventions created by his brilliant mind, but would also give him access to an infinite source of energy, an unrivaled power to destroy all his enemies and those hypocritical politicians who ruled the nation. Etzel is a supremacist. He seeks to exterminate all of his enemies whom he considers in not seek peace, he seeks domination. He considers himself a great hero and the herald of the god of war. Mon dieu, 
Imagination rises. Open the door of the Flame of Hephaestus. Jules, did you find him? Are you all right? Yes. The Raven is not our worry anymore. And Phobos? Not a sign. Can I use the iMag to open this? I'm afraid that this time it won't be that easy. Luckily, we have this. Concentrated blue blood from the Nautilus. Say goodbye to that cholera remedy. Before we do anything else... Lore? Any wonderful lore? You guys have mechs and just decide not to use them? Weird. As soon as it has come into contact, the blue blood has activated. Use the controls. Okay. I'd like to circle. Rotate the circle. Um. All right. So this does two of them. Ah, uh, it's one of these. Down. That's not as bad as it could be. Just gotta figure out where's what. So... We've gotta make sure that that one's in the, the two triangles going down. The... Let's see. One triangle going up. Triangles going down. Uh-huh. Then... We just need to make this one work. I did it! Let's go inside. Absolutely marvelous. Flame of Hephaestus. This does look like something straight out of the Superman movies, the originals. The energy of Atlantis. In the year 6500 BC, a group of Atlantean explorers landed on a remote island. They were found in there they found an extinct volcano and inside it something that would change the destiny of their people forever. An immense floating ball of light. Christened it the Flame of Hephaestus. Atlantis experts believe the flame was an accumulation of gases contained in the structure of the volcano, which, when traversed by a flow of electrons, produced discharges of electricity that generated light and a very powerful energy. The Atlanteans exploited this discovery immediately. In barely more than ten years, the flame was feeding the whole of Atlantis through a network of conduits and a golden age began. Her technology was unparalleled and trade flourished in an unimaginable way. Her prosperity attracted people from all over the world. However, among the Atlanteans, there were those who believed that foreigners could steal the flame from them, and they became more and more hostile towards them. Fear dominated them. They transformed their city into an impregnable castle and subjected to slavery those they considered unworthy of being Atlantean citizens. They squandered almost all of their wealth on erecting an underwater barrier around the island of the Flame of Hephaestus, designed to alter the climate and currents to make it unreachable. Over time, they regulated... Or they relegated the maintenance of the huge network that distributed the flame to the most miserable slaves. With this state of affairs, a small accident could trigger a tragedy. That's what happened when a soldier crashed a slave into a fragile pipe. A leak caused a spark, and then each and every flame-powered machine exploded at the same time. In the blink of an eye, Atlantis was wiped off the map. The few survivors abandoned her ruins and exiled themselves on the island of the Flame of Hephaestus to keep it out of the reach of mankind. That moment... Ancestor's guard was born. Way to go, guardsman Keith. This one here too. Hmm. Unleash the flame. Pretty. Hello, little sister. Thanks for opening that door for me. Phobos, Vern, activate! Yeah, that's the shape. Just smaller. Excuse me for using this ruse with you. 
But I need you to listen to me, Vern. What the? You are the shadow on the bridge. Placea, you must accept your defeat and stop confusing Vern with Liberty Dreams out of his reach. She didn't show you the whole picture. I am the fear that inhabits inside your mind. Yes, but I don't want its destruction. The only reason of my existence is protecting us from pain. How is it that you still don't understand that you'll be happier with me here than on the outside, in a world that doesn't love nor understand you? Don't listen to him. He wants to corrupt your imagination. That's untrue. I just want the best for him. You came to this world looking for protection from reality, fleeing from failure and shame, because you knew that here you would find everything you always craved for. Adventures, mysteries, extraordinary journeys. Why do you want to return to your world? Here, you can be happy forever. I can do it, and I just need one thing to achieve it. Destroy the iMac. What? Quit your impossible rider dreams. Destroy the iMag. Give me the control of your world, and you will never feel pain or rejection again. No. I don't want to hide. Now that I've seen what I can create, I want to show it to the world. At all costs. Grr. That is delusional. I can't allow you to suffer. I don't want more pain. We must protect ourselves. If you don't want an eternal paradise, I will drown you in a grayish terror that will make you want to keep your head inside a hole in the ground. You will live the rest of your days working as an accountant for the nation's factories. Don't try to resist. You are just a sad scribbler with a head filled with preposterous predictions. Yes, that is what I am. What I always wanted to be. Better than a coward who hides from himself. All right. The hard way, then. I will turn the flame of Hephaestus with my imagination. I will write the end to this story of yours, of the Imag, Placea, and the Nautilus. The nation will prevail forever inside your mind. Vern, I hope you like smoke and ashes. Uh, Nemo? Anytime now. Control has faded. We're free. Why don't you open? I was expecting this. If my predictions seem preposterous to you, don't read my books. I'm glad that despite your criticism, you recalled my theories regarding Atlantean mythology. That thing you came out with about sand and rust was catchy. I made the guess that if the iMag is my creative imagination catalyst, when coming into contact with destructive imagination, it should annul it. Luckily enough, it worked. Has Phobos disappeared forever? Not quite. Fear is terrible, but sometimes it's necessary. What has vanished is Phobos's control over your mind. You're finally free from him. Thanks, Jules, for saving us. I wish I could stay. May I see you again? We are inside you. Always will be. We are the shape of fantasy. She said the line. It's time to go back home. Imagination rises complete. I lost my flame. I can't go anywhere else. Ready. Hiding from reality only nurtures fear, and our only chance to defeat it is our hope. The ability to imagine a better world. I had to take note of all these events before they were lost and deformed by the treacherous currents of my memory. And here I am, back into my world. The real world. The not Silent Hill on a Bridge world. After Jules Verne was hit harshly by the rejection in 1860 of his dark novel Paris in the 20th century, the author recovered. During the following years, wrote a series of stories full of imagination and optimism that forever changed literature and served as inspiration to all humanity. Good job, Jules. Seen anything else? 
picture slowly. All right, there we go. Hey. And there we go, guys. Oh, we're going to get some pictures of him. Awesome. So that was uh, Vern the Shape of Fantasy, ladies and gentlemen. That was a really fun game. I like that. Told her it was... No, wasn't necessarily so much a point-and-click game as a walking simulator with puzzles, but man, it told a good story. I really enjoyed that. The ending was slightly flat. I think it needed a little bit more bells and whistles, especially with I was waiting for Nemo, but I liked it a lot. Um, this has the vibe to me of like a Don Bluth film of the author being stuck in a world of his own creations. I just It just seemed really cool. But, um, yeah, I, I thought it was a nice little, it was a, it was a kind of a short game, but it was a really cool trip through the imagination or through a world inspired by such an incredible author. Um, Jules Verne and H.G. Wells did so much um, for like long term coming up with ideas that some became like really legitimate technologies that we use today and kind of take, take uh, for granted today too but uh yeah we'll go ahead and call it a series guys and actually we got some acknowledgements here are we going to go into kickstarter backers <laughs> let's see there was no squid either but nemo said the kraken didn't One year later. Hmm. This letter. It must be important. Vern, we need your help at Hemera. The Nautilus is plowing through waters again. And Cedric has finally found a vaccine that we must deliver to the whole world. Signed, E. Oh my god! But how? Oh. So there could be some DLC coming down the pipeline or a sequel being planned. Interesting. I like that. I guess we'll have to see what happens, guys. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this adventure. I know I did. If you guys haven't followed the channel yet, please do so. Um, hope y'all enjoyed. If you liked the video, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help. And we will see you in the next series. Later days, everyone.